knew it was going to be me. I really felt it. We knew you knew. Yeah. Um, appreciation. So firstly, um, I'm so grateful to my best friend Sasha for introducing me to you. She's sitting here with me after 15 years. And it's been a journey. Uh, it really has You matched been. it. We'd like you to appreciate the unfolding of things, for sure, for sure, for sure. But accept your point of attraction. You're asking. You're asking and your readiness for the rendezvous. Yeah. And um, I would like to share something. Uh, two days ago, I live in London, and I was uh, tubing back home, and I thought, what well, I wanted to ask. And I felt the answer when I was in the tube. And say so what I wanted is just sharing the answer to the question. Yeah. Well, isn't that what this is all about? This isn't about you all coming long distances and getting bigger and bigger rooms and then sitting in a room where you don't ever get called to the hot seat. This is what it's about. All of the answers will come to you. All of them. We're going to interrupt you just for a little bit longer. The thing that is really a helpful thing to acknowledge is that because of that thing that we've been talking about, started off on such a good conversation about resistance. Because of resistance, which just means, really, it means difference. It means difference in frequencies. Because of that, when you ask a question, the frequency, here we go again, uh, the way the question feels, the way the question feels and the way the answer feels are very different feelings. <laughs> and so let there be a little distance between if you let yourself just feel what you're feeling and ask the question and get it out there you've done the work of the asking and the answer is already all queued up for you and then at a time when you are less resistant you can allow the solution or the answer to come the frequency of the question and the frequency of the answer big difference the frequency of a problem and the frequency of a solution big difference and so if you don't expect the answer in the moment of expressing the problem that's why people feel like their prayers aren't being answered and we say pray prayers of appreciation that puts you right in the receiving mode of everything that you've ever been asking for so yes yeah absolutely and that's exactly what happened because um I was uh, meditating on uh, the asking and in many of your recording and previous, you know, um, um, teaching, it was about, you know, no matter your resistance, but when your desire is so deep, yeah. it still will manifest yeah. because yeah. it's so strong you're asking. And I, when been... your asking is strong enough, it almost doesn't matter what you believe. Here we go again. A belief is a thought that you keep thinking. When you believe that you can't have something that you want, then you can't. <laughs> not right now. Not while the belief is that you can't. And so you've got to soothe that belief, that frequency, that emotion into something that feels better. Just like we demonstrated earlier and everyone understood that, yes? So your question is? So my question is uh, already answered. I'm here. And there was the matching between... Uh, when uh, the desire is so deep and then what it is that I don't see, there is actually the fears of maybe achieving or maybe being answered. What it is that part of the resistance that I'm not able to see. When, I'm, when I feel so deep in my desire and I feel the passion about it and the vision of that, but then I don't really see what it is that is holding me back. And uh, it creates the resistance that it well, doesn't allow me to manifest. So here these words are in the way again, aren't they? Because it's not something to see. It's something to feel. And it doesn't matter what it is. You only have to know when it's there. And it's there every time you feel anything from the lower half of the emotional scale. It's there every time. Is that on this card this time? Yeah. If you have your card... From about seven down, boredom, resistance, pessimism even more, frustration even more, overwhelmment even more, disappointment even more, doubt, all the way down to fear, grief, depression. And so that's how you know. So that's your indicator of what's in the way, and it doesn't matter what it is. 
You don't have to find out what the culprit is that caused one of those emotions and wrestle it to the ground and kill it. You don't have to figure out what it is and then go to therapy and see if you can get rid of it. You just have to find a matching thought to something that is optimistic. You're just looking for existing matches to the upper half of the scale and that automatically takes you out of focus with whatever it was and it doesn't ever matter if you ever understand what it was. Because as you soothe yourself, then you match different things. It's easier than you thought, isn't it? Does that make sense to you? Yes. Humans are so, we love you so much. <laughs> you want to be so precise. You want to be able to explain yourself to everybody. And you want to be able to explain, well, I figured out what was wrong and it was this and this and this. And the whole time you're explaining it, you're calibrated to it. So you're holding yourself in that frequency. It's like Jerry used to tell the story to Esther that he sat in front of the fireplaces and the logs in that part of the country were really, they spit sparks all the time. And when one would get on his sweater, if he brushed it off quickly, not any problem. But if he didn't notice it, then it would burn a hole in his sweater. And it's the same sort of thing. When you've got something that doesn't feel good and you don't do something about it, it becomes more because the law of attraction makes whatever is active in your vibration more, you see. And so once you understand that you've asked and it's been given, now just find a match that feels good, that feels like something that feels good to you. And we know you know the difference. Then you've accomplished a calibration and then, oh, we have something to say to you. Hang on. Let's go into a new room together. Let's say that you all are hearing this and getting this and willing to try this. And it's new for you because you're really motivated to understand everything and explain everything because you live in a society where a lot of people have demanded a lot of justification from you in their comparative nature, in their controlling nature. It's all right. They didn't, in most cases, mean to do it. So you are willing to try this game. It's a priceless, valuable game where you're just going to realize when you're having a negative emotion. Esther knew this morning what hers was about. The converter wouldn't work and her hair looked really, really wild. So she didn't have to wonder, what's upsetting me right now? Well, it was pretty obvious. I'm a hairdresser, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to travel for a living? I, I can do whatever so, you want me. But there's more to this story because, yeah, the converter didn't work. But on the way out, Esther sent a text, please buy me a curling iron that works with... So she had that thought. She had that impulse before she ever got to the city. And then when she got to her room and they delivered the converter, she waved that off. Now, it was something that she should have let come in. You see what we're getting at? Was there an uneasiness about it? Yeah, a little. But she didn't want to trouble the person that she'd asked to get the curling iron in the first place. This all falls into the category of sort of arguing for your limitations. Don't bother with that thing that I was inspired to ask for. Because... I'm brave and strong and I've got a converter. And so you get better and better at honoring your own requests. You see, here's the new room that we wanted to walk in with all of you together. So you feel the negative emotion. That's all that matters. You're aware that you're feeling some uneasiness. It's in early subtle stages. It hasn't reached the place that there's some disastrous culmination. You're just feeling some uneasiness and you don't like it. And you like yourself enough to want to grant yourself easiness rather than uneasiness. So rather than trying to figure out what is it that I'm feeling uneasy about, you don't have to do that. You just have to find something that you are easy about. And as you do that, you keep your vibration in this frequency where what you need or what you want is always within easy access to you. That really is the way that it works. Esther used to say to Jerry, you know, she was trying to convince him that he would like to be with her. 
So she sang, Iveda, I'd be surprisingly good for you. She sang, Get on the Bus, Gus. And one of the things that she said that she thought would really appeal to him is, I shine in a crisis. <laughs> well, that's valiant. There should be statues for people to do that, right? We explained to her once she started listening to us that the reason she shines in a crisis is because the crisis causes her to focus. And what we're asking you to do is focus pre-crisis. Focus at softer, more subtle. But so many of you, and Esther included, you aren't nice enough to yourselves to want to insist on most of your moments being moments of ease and beauty and joy. Because somewhere you picked up along your physical trail this thing that you need to pay some price. And really, when you're calibrating to other humans, the more you sweat and the harder you breathe, the more you are revered as those are getting out and getting it done. You see, most people aren't understanding that you're calibrating to the energy that creates worlds and you're masterful in your ability to attract, you see. So, so... So... All is good. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? it? Does. does it make perfect sense? It does, really does. Thank good you. Good conversation. Good conversation. Mm.